In this video, I'm discussing my book, Backgammon Backgame Strategies. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and what you'd like to see in future videos and I'll work on that. So in this uh, video, I'm talking about the book I wrote called Backgammon Backgame Strategies. So I'll tell you a few things. This is the cover. Um, the cover is a picture of uh, one of my favorite types of positions in a back game. Black is the defender playing a 2-3 back game shown here, and white is the attacker who rolls a disaster roll, a 6-5 anti-joker, which forces her to play two checkers off of 6 and 7 points to the ace point, uh, leaving two blots and a triple shot, and it leads to a double and pass. Um, so these are the kinds of things that can happen in uh, a back game. Uh, and let me show you the back cover of the book. Uh, it talks a little bit about me, but I wanted to read to you the quotes uh, from some of the best players in the world. Mochi Masayuki Mochizuki wrote, in this book about back games, you can learn what it took me 20 years to understand. Uh, Joe Russell, world champion, uh, wrote, playing and defending against back games are amongst the most difficult skills to develop. Alex shows you the essential concepts that are crucial to playing back games, playing these positions. His book will help everyone improve their back game play from novices to world-class players. And then Wilcox Snellings, one of the best players in the world, he wrote, though back games are uncommon, strategies are counterintuitive and lead to frequent and significant equity errors. Alex's deep and comprehensive analysis reveals how how to gain a solid edge in these games. And Neil Kazaros is another legend who wrote the foreword to this book. Uh, and this is an excerpt from his uh, from his foreword. Backgame and Backgame Strategies is a unique book since precious little has been written about backgames. I've learned lots from just reading the manuscript and certainly look forward to learning for years from this marvelous book. So thank you to them for writing it. Uh, I wanted to answer a few questions that people have asked. The first is why write a book? So I've done a lot of reading and a lot of writing in my studies. I did uh, 15 years of training after high school. So I was required to do a lot of reading and a lot of writing and I've gotten fast at it and I enjoy it. So um, that's something that I do. Uh, I do of course enjoy backgammon and one of the ways I like to learn is by writing things down. And when I write things down, it helps me learn. And I've written so much stuff down that I was able to uh, complete an entire book about this. Uh, now, the, the another, another question is, why did I choose this topic? Backgammon, backgame strategies. Back games are very rare. Um, so it's not the highest priority if you're trying to learn. Um, I've actually written another book on opening strategies that hasn't been formally published, but my, I may do so in the future. Um, opening positions are very common, of course. That's the most common position is the opening position in backgammon, and you should study that a lot. Uh, and there have been a lot of books that are written about that recently, and there hasn't been a lot written about back games, and the computers don't play them well, so you have to do special rollouts. Uh, that take longer to get the answers. So uh, I wanted to write about a topic that hasn't been written about too much as of yet. There's never been an entire book dedicated to back game strategies. There have been chapters or sections by uh, players like uh, Bill Roberti, authors like Bill Roberti, one of the best uh, authors of all time. Uh, Walter Trice wrote a great section in Backgammon Bootcamp. More recently, Francois Tardieu wrote one in Backgammon Strategic Concepts, and Mochi wrote a nice chapter in Backgammon Masterclass. But this is an entire book. So uh, another question is, what is a back game? A back game is when one player, I call him the defender, in this case Black, has so many checkers back uh, much more than the opponent, which is the attacker, and has to keep two anchors in the opponent's home board to get a shot, which is called a critical shot, to hit and turn the game around. He can't win by racing. He can't win by priming. He can't win by blitzing. He has to maintain contact value by holding two anchors or sometimes more. Because of that, there are many counterintuitive strategies 
in a back game. Usually in traditional forward games, getting hit is bad and hitting your opponent is good. However, it's often the reverse in back games. The most important concept in a back game is timing. I say in the book, the three most important things in back games are timing, timing, and timing. So there are many things, many discussions uh, in the book about all of those topics and much more. I wanted to show you a little bit inside. So these are the concept contents. Um, it's 299 pages of total text with approximately 17 pages of introductory materials. Uh, it's It includes 16 chapters I'll go through so that you can look at that. Uh, introduction to back games, basic back game concepts, counting numbers, bearing in against adjacent anchor back games, bearing in against single gap back games, bearing in against double gap back games. So the, depending on the location of the two anchors, the bear in is going to be a little different. Next chapter is attackers timing requirements for bearing cubes with midpoint contact because the timing is very important and this discusses that. Comparison of back game anchors during the attacker's bear in, bear off cube action against well-timed back games, bear in cube action against well-timed back games, attacker's flexibility during the bear in and bear off, defender redoubles before hitting the critical shot, unorthodox back game tactics, defender's checker plays, attacker's checker plays, and finally a one page conclusion. I'll show you a little bit in here. This is the forward by Neil Kazaros. I wrote an introduction to the forward, which I'll read for you briefly here. Neil Kazaros is a legend in backgammon. He has been playing for decades and is respected for being one of the best backgammon players of all time. Neil has a long list of accolades in backgammon. He has been named a giant of backgammon every time since its inception in 1991. He has been inducted into the USBGF Hall of Fame. He's the all-time points leader in the ABT with countless tournament wins. He is also known for developing the backgammon match equity table and Neil's numbers. He's a frequent contributor to online backgammon forums, and he has consulted on numerous backgammon books, including the, this one. I was honored when Neil kindly agreed to help with the manuscript and write the forward. His feedback was invaluable. So this is what Neil writes in the forward. Backgammon Back Game Strategies is a unique book since precious little has been written about back games. One of the reasons for this is that the bots don't play back games all that well when they don't have at least some semblance of containment on their side of the board. Another reason is the large amount of time needed to do proper rollouts, as anything less than four ply with a huge search interval can be suspect. Alex has taken the time to do many rollouts and has produced a masterpiece. There are countless tables comparing common, decently timed back games versus distribution of spares, and also showing that stronger rollouts are best in general. There is much discussion and comparison of back game points, both in bearing off and bearing in. As always with back games, timing is a huge issue and Alex addresses this in detail from both sides for checker plays and cube actions. I've learned lots from just reading the manuscript and certainly look forward to learning for years from this marvelous book. Thank you very much to Neil Kazaros for writing that kind forward. I wanna show you a few other things. Um, it is available on Amazon, and I'll put a link in the description. Um, it's going to be available in multiple different countries, and I'll put various links in there. So there is a preface that I wrote. It's um, I call it my story. It basically discusses uh, how I got into uh, tournament backgammon and uh, how I grew up and learning backgammon and uh, how I got interested in it. Um, it's interesting for people to read if you're interested in that. Um, and I wrote a few poems, uh, and this one is called The Back Game. I wrote it specifically for this book, and it's relatively brief, so I'll read it for you here. It's called The Back Game. I've been playing backgammon for many a year. When rolling the dice, I have no fear. A game of luck, a game of war. Other games can be a bore. You roll the dice and move your stones. With some luck, you bring them home. Easy to learn, but hard to master. The winner's the one who bears off faster. Sometimes your opponent leaves a blot, and you have a chance to hit a shot. Sending a checker all the way back, getting hit, feels like a smack. But one day I saw something strange. I thought the player was completely deranged. 
He left lots scattered over the board. He said without risk, there is no reward. Slotting points to make a prime. He said it would pay off in due time. The game continued for quite some time. The plays he made blew my mind. Everyone thought his game was hopeless, playing aggressive and seemingly reckless. His opponent rolled big and took great strides while he played his checkers on his own side. At just the right moment, he got a shot. Miraculously, he hit the jackpot. To instantly turn the game around, his opponent almost fell to the ground. His opponent's gammon looked like gin, but after redoubling, he took the win. Everyone watching was completely amazed, but during the game, he wasn't phased. He waited patiently throughout the game. I never got to know his name. This was the first time I saw this strategy. He advised against it for fear of a tragedy. When I first tried it, I lost the gammon until the tactics I re-examined. Slowly but surely, my skill improved, though my shoeette partners disapproved. Now when I play them, I get so excited, and after I win, my partner is delighted. Nothing's as complex as a back game. Regular back gammon is just not the same. So back games are the most complicated types of games in back gammon, and they have the most complicated positions, and that's what I discuss here in this book. Here are some uh, other parts. This is uh, the first page on the introduction to back games, so it discusses what is a back game. Here's an image. There are over 500 um, positions and hundreds of rollouts in the book. So the people that like that will enjoy it. Uh, it can be very technical because there's a lot of math involved. Uh, however, that's what you kind of need to understand these complex positions. But I try to explain everything in the prose and put uh, important points in text boxes so you can read that. Especially, I believe, the last couple of chapters on the checker plays are very interesting to players who uh, don't really want to read the technical details uh, in the other chapters. Um, this this uh, page talks about the requirements uh, and back games, and it's in the second chapter, basic back game concepts. Basically, the back uh, game player, the defender, requires two anchors as well as a strong front position. So you can see here uh, there are two anchors here and a strong front position. This position is stronger, and it shows uh, two examples side by side of a well-timed back game and a poorly timed back game. I try to do this a lot, compare two positions side by side that have small differences to explain things I feel like that helps people understand and learn. Uh, it certainly does help me learn when I do that. Um, here is the page where I introduce the terms hintros and suhais. Hintros is an acronym for hits in the next two roll sequence, and suhais is an acronym for subsequent hitting sequences. A lot of the times in back games, especially when the attacker is bearing in, you want to look at the intros, how many hits the defender will have in the next two roll sequence. And that will tell you um, how to play the checkers or whether it's a correct double or not a correct double or whether it's a correct take or not a correct take. So that's the next two roll sequence, one by one player and the second by the other player, the opponent. Sue highs is subsequent hitting sequences, which may occur after the immediate next two roll sequence. So sometimes you have to think about that too. So this is where I define it. And you really need to understand intros uh, when you're playing back games. And when you learn back games, when you learn about these things, you're able to apply them to other types of games. Things like timing you could use in prime versus prime games, and various other games. Looking forward, you'll learn a lot about that. And bearing against uh, deep anchor back games or other uh, single anchor holding games, or whether they're deep or they're high. So you'll learn a lot from back games that you can apply to other games. This is a table. This is one of the technical things. It's the hint rows during the attacker's bearing based on her spare distribution for adjacent anchor back games. So adjacent anchor back games are when the two anchors are on adjacent points, like the one two back game is when the uh, anchors are on the 24 and 23 points, the attackers or opponents one and two points, and then there's the two three and the three four. Uh, so those are the three back games I compared. And this shows the intros for each position where there are 
are three spares. The attacker has a full prime, and the spares are in different locations listed here. And the total number of hint rows for the whole thing, for all of them, this is about 50 different variations. And the average you can see is highest uh, in the 2 3 back game. Uh, and this is color coded so that the highest values are the darkest gray and the lowest values are white. And I talk about this in detail, and you can learn more by reading the text. This one talks about comparison of back game anchors during the attacker's baron. So in these text boxes, I highlight things. So the purpose of the double anchors is to get the defender the critical shots he needs to turn the game around. And the keys to anchor selection include timing, the depth of the anchors, location of the anchors relative to each other. So I mentioned they could be adjacent anchors. They could have a single gap between them. I call that single gap back games or double gap, double gap back games. Anything more than that is not as strong. And the number of open points behind the anchors. So for example, the one, two back game has no open points behind the back, behind the anchors. Whereas the two, three or two, four has a single open point behind the anchors. And three, four and three, five have two open points behind the anchors. So this chapter compares all of those and sees what happens with each of the different anchors when the attacker is bearing in. This one talks about the strengths of the two, three back game during the attacker's bearing. So again, I show this position. It's a similar position to that on the cover, which is one of the disaster roles that can happen with a two, three back game. The two, three back game based on the data and hundreds of rollouts is the strongest when the attacker is bearing in, assuming you have uh, good timing because of a variety of things that are detailed in the book. This page talks about volatility. So this is the attacker is bearing off against the one, two back game. And here the positions are almost identical. The difference is the number of checkers on the attacker's three point. In position 916, the first one here, there are four checkers, then here there are three checkers, and here there are two checkers. Um, and the Q action is different in these ones. So you'll see in this one, it's a double and take, but here it's a double and pass. But now with one fewer checker to up, it still a it becomes a take again. And that's because of the volatility. If you look at all the possible roles that the attacker has, uh, there are many roles that leave a single shot or a double shot and a variety of different things. And you have to take all that into consideration. And what happens is when you lack spares on the lower points, like here, there are many two blot rolls, and I discussed that in there. This is a summary of the cube action when the attacker has three points to clear against the one two back game. So, this is a brief summary, and the details are in the preceding pages. And then the next section is talks talks about the bear off cube action against the one three back game. So, I go through all of them one two, then one three. Not exactly all of them. There are some things that I don't include in much detail. Um, there's a little bit about the double gap back games, the 1-4 and the 2-5. They're not quite as strong. They don't work quite as well in terms of the back game strategy, in terms of waiting for the attacker to leave a critical shot to turn the game around. Oftentimes, they're converted into single anchor holding games, either a high anchor holding game or a deep anchor holding game. Uh, and triple anchor or more back games, I don't discuss much at all uh, in this book because that requires a whole other volume. And I don't include topics such as when there are two anchors, but one is in the opponent's inner board and one is on the outer board because um, those play a little bit differently. Here, this page talks about blocked numbers in the Baron. So this is an example of a 5-3 against a 2-4 back game. Against a single gap back game like 2-4 or 1-3 or also 3-5, oftentimes, oftentimes numbers like fives are forced. So here the only place that the attacker can play a five off is the six point. And threes similarly must be played off the six point. So a roll like 5-3 becomes very challenging. Um, here and it talks about the spares and the flexibility. Uh, I talk about semi-gaps and reduced points. Semi-gap is basically a stripped point, and a reduced point is one with three checkers on it rather than four or two or one. One would be a blot, zero would be a gap, 
two is a semi-gap, three is a reduced point, and so forth. Here I do a comparison of adjacent anchor, adjacent anchor back ends with a full prime. So looking at the one, two, two, three, three, four, and four, five. Um, and these are four positions. They're all identical in terms of the defender's structure um, as well as the attacker's structure, but the anchors are shifted um, from the one, two to the two, three, and then everything is shifted on the other side. Uh, so there are many tables that discuss these types of positions so you can understand the differences. Uh, this is a page from chapter 12, defender redoubles before hitting the critical shots. So these are some major considerations be, uh, for redoubling before hitting the critical shot. And I go through in detail in the text with many examples of each of these things. And this is one of the pages from the checker plays for the defender. This one talks about daylight. Daylight means being able to come out with a six or being able to escape. So based on the position, you want to kind of figure this out, see if the opponent has daylight. And this one, had, there are three positions that are similar in here, where this is the first position, and then the attacker's advanced back checker has moved back one or two points, and that changes the play. Um, the play is the same, it's double four. This is another one for the defender uh, hitting due to lack of alternatives. Um, sometimes you just have to hit. You hit loose. You play pure. This is one of the examples, and there are many examples in the book. And uh, this is an attacker's checker play. So here the attacker has a 6-4 to play, and she can come out and hit, or she can use a 6-4 to make the bar point. This is a similar position where... The uh, checkers from the nine point have been moved to the 10 point, and now the plays uh, are different. And the text describes why it is and what you need to think about when you're making those plays as the attacker. So that was a summary of my book, Backgammon Back Game Strategies. It is now available on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, and you can contact me with any questions. Uh, I hope you really enjoy this book. Again, it is a unique book because it's on a topic that's never really been discussed at this length in a book on backgammon. So it'll be a unique addition to the backgammon literature. Uh, I hope you enjoy the book. I hope you enjoy this video. Thank you for joining me. Please like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have questions about the book, please put them in there. I'll put the link uh, to where you can buy it in the description. I look forward to seeing you in future videos. And until then, keep rolling your dice.